What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And today we have a really special guest. Listen, he's been putting out big songs from in the 90s, and right now he even has out a new song right now called Party All Night with Wayne Wonder. You know, we have in the building today, we have Frankie Sly in the building today. What's going on, big boss? Well, I go on muscle with the muscle. Hustle, <laughs> hustle, you know? You understand. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Entertainment Report podcast today. Yeah, man. Blessings, man. It's a blessing, you know? All right. Maximum respect. Well, you know, we like to go right from the beginning and then bring it right up to 2022. So my first question for you is this. Where did you grow up in Jamaica? And what type of child were you? Well, I grew up in a place called East Kingston. I was born in a place called Franklin Town, where them called Dunkirk. And I grew up in a East on a wall. You know, I never grew up in Franklin Town. I grew up more, more East, you know, on the Rockford side, Sheffield Road to Rockford, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, type of child I was. Um, I was a regular child. I probably had a little, yeah, a little troublemaker, but I wasn't a really bad kid, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could have relate to. Elders, cause you know we we'll go respectable still, you know, even though we we'll go rugged, but well, that's a fairly decent child. From there, and then growing up, what did you think you were gonna get into? What did you wanna get into when you became an adult? All right, growing up, you know your parents always have a direction of them or you forgot. So I went to one of the best high schools in Jamaica. I went to Olmas. Mm-hmm. Ulmer's High School for Boys, which are one of the best schools in the Caribbean. So, from when I do that, early school to Ulmer's, past the common entrance, my old man named more things, say, them have a lawyer, a doctor in the works, you see? Mm-hmm. But lo and behold, me have news for them, because music did captivate me. Where. When I focus on school and music, I deal with mm-hmm. You see me, I say? So, from an early age, me know say a music me never do. And what was it that you, about music in particular? Was it something you heard? Was it something you seen? Was it somebody in the area? What was it about music that captured you in the first place? All right, you have a DJ name, Papa San. Saying, yeah man, it's a DJ there. First time I listen to DJ there, me know say I just something I'm going to do. And then I start listening to the DJ name, Early Be the Doctor. See? So, them are the two first DJ who really captivate me and get me real interested in the thing. You understand? Them go on and out of East, them meet a DJ named Johnny Ringo. Mm. As a East youth. And from this, I know say, it's a rap, a music, you know? music and this time while you were in school did you enter any competitions were you in the band did you do anything musical while you were in school well i just like the regular concerts and them thing that school would i shell them you know me i say yeah that's a regular concert but i never really done a competition thing mm-hmm. to be honest and when did you even discover your voice to know that you knew in your mind music you love, but when did you actually discover your voice to know that this is something that I could potentially do? Well, to be honest, you know, it started out as just something that we love. And we just do it. Never knew it, it could have become a career. Mm-hmm. You understand me? At that time, a lot of people used to look down on music, including all my parents. Mm-hmm. You understand me? I said to you, them, music was like, it was in somewhat, in some sense, unacceptable, like for be a DJ back then. You know me, I say, especially your parents are saying they got good school. Mm-hmm. They might expect other things of you, you know what I mean? But after the emergency, a yellow man and people like them, the way, people see, say, yo, that's something I can work. I figure them, 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 them kind of lighten up a little bit, you know me, I say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. From right there, crazy. And what was your first move to actually start to move towards music then? All right. I started out on sound systems. Okay. Yeah. I started DJ on sound system. I copy era sound in a rock fort. 
DJ Pound, I'm like a virgin son. I'm learning for DJ Pound, I'm like a virgin father son. I saw him electrophonic. Mm-hmm. On Oliver Road, in a rock fort, on top of Oliver Road. Place called Tambrin Tree. My virgin Chata, fame father. Me and a youth named Skitty Rankin, a DJ from Dunkirk. Mm-hmm. You know me I say? We DJ for all the little area sound them. Young girls' choice, Qualitex. You know me I say? Electrophonic. Till a youth out of Rockford. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but him, him deceased. Mm-hmm. He took us to Richmond Park, took, took me and Skitty Rankin to Richmond Park, introduced us to a brother named Big John. Mm. Big John had a sound called u Power. Mm. That was the first sound with potential when we start DJ pan, where we got a country right from the truck back, got a country for DJ and them things. You know what I say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, me and Skitty Rankin. And then that's where I met Wayne Wonder and that sound, you type out. It was me, Skitty Rankin, Wayne Wonder, Conroy Smith. Um, I, I'll DJ the name Chaka, Chaka Indian. Mm-hmm. You have another little DJ named Slim, Slim John. As far as I can remember, you know? Yes. And that was the crew. Yeah, that was the crew. Me and and it, you were you were DJing back then or you were singing back then when you DJ man, always a DJ man, never never singer, always a DJ. May mm-hmm. I skit around it was it was two singer. Conrad Smith and Wayne Wonder was a singer. Frankie Sly, Skitty Rankin. A matter of fact, it wasn't Frankie Sly, it was General Frankie back then. So okay. How did you get your name General Frankie in the first place at this time here now? But then I you know I either General or Rankin, I love DJ things so. Mm-hmm. And the general car, me, I mean, the ranking up our skitty ranking and general mm-hmm. Frankie. That was my par, you know. You don't ever make it, I mean, on recording, but it was a bad DJ back then. Car, mm-hmm. and him teach me a whole power, me know, you know, back then. Car, he was ahead of me, and he took me under his wings and showed me a lot of stuff, you know. I came up on the road first, I make me know, say, yo, it's a job, can't get paid for do this. Because I said, they just like it. And from I see the mic more and touch them go DJ. But I used to just do it for fun, it was free. He was the first man that carry me before I go up on you type power. He carry me to some little session where I usually DJ and then quality text and some little sound with a DJ and get like a fifty dollar back then, which was a lot of money. Of course. So now when you got to U type power, around what year? Do you remember what year you got to U type power? Oh, how I hear that again. Yeah. <clears throat> Early eighties, that's all I can say. Yeah. Got to be somewhere around 84, 85. Just guess me, I guess. But I saw me early 80s. And do you remember any of the, any big dances in particular you guys were playing or it was more local dances that song was playing? Yeah, man, we play all about the place, you know. We used to play all about the place, you know. But one of the biggest dances we play mm-hmm. back then was in a Cockburn pen. We play in a song name, in a land name, Bumble Land. Mm-hmm. Against a sound name, Imperial High Power, with Junior Cat and Marlon Brando. And you know, me I said that night mm-hmm. was a historic night, too, because that was the first time I heard Ninja Man DJ that night. Okay. Every time, every time I never named Ninja Man, they named Ugly Man. Yeah, that night was a historic night. Mm-hmm. Ninja Man, Ugly Man, mash up the place. Joel Shot was there. Early B, the doctor was in the dance that night. That's the first time I see Early B in a real life. And he, and he wasn't in a good mood that night. Mm. I can't tell you that. <laughs> and doctor is one of the calmest man, because I went on to meet doctor after. You know. Doctor is a man I came. Me and doctor go to a studio. Okay. Yeah, I get to know him. Mm. Never record with him, but he carry me and me and skit it to RJ studio one day with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God rest him soul too. Good, good man, you know. So what was it like actually meeting early B that time in that dancer? Because remember, no, you said, I, 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 never, I, yeah, I never meet him in the dance that night. I saw him. Mm-hmm. I saw him in the, in the dance that night. He was, he was, he was, he, you couldn't meet him that night. He did a rat that night. There. You ever say he was in a good mood? And, yeah. doctor, and doctor, the calmest man. Yeah, Ninja Man upset him that night. Okay. Yeah, Ninja Man upset him that night. Upset him. Yeah, Ninja Man made a statement on the mic regarding his wife. And it never went well. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, he came forward and he disrespect Ninja Man bad that night. Wet up Ninja Man with the Heineken kid that night. Then. Yeah. Anybody remember that dad say? Mm-hmm. Imperial and you type poor in a, in, in a bumble land the night, remember? I don't remember what year. Just mm-hmm. said it was early 80s. Yeah. That was one year. That was one of the big nights that you remember on you type poor at that time. Can, there. can never forget that night. That night stand out in my head because mm-hmm. of that uh, incident in particular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Got you. And how long were you DJing you type power for? I can't remember off of the top of my head, you know, but for a while, probably a year and a half, too. Okay. Yeah, so the last car, Big John come in like badness, you know, him not mm-hmm. pay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 he said, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, something always happen, you know, something always go on and something go on with the money, so you never, you never get where you forget. Mm-hmm. If you forget 50, you have to give thanks if you get 30, you know? Just one yeah, of but it, but, yeah, but it was a good experience, to be honest. Yeah, so do it. Did you get into a studio at this time here or not yet? No, no, no. I never even know where inside our studio look at that time. Mm-hmm. On it. So what was your next move after you type power? Because you said this is where you met Wayne Wonder, even though both you guys are from East, but this is where you're really connected with him here. Yeah, and we never really connect, you know. I just mm-hmm. knew him. Mm-hmm. I just knew him. You know what I said? After that, it's just a DJ from sound system to sound system out of East Kingston all about. And the, 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 the break, the kind of break came one night I went to a fet. Mm-hmm. Don't know high school was having a fet. And me and my crew go up there because you know you have a little bridge and you know, say a little area DJ and Something good I go on in the area, so mm-hmm. them encourage us, encourage me for go up there. So I go up there the night and go shell it. And that night, I, I met um, Wayne Wanda was there with Film Crew. Mm-hmm. Film Crew was we was him, Nada Ranks, and rapper Freddy. Of course, yeah, that was the crew. Mm-hmm. I'm a meet, I'm a, I met Wayne that night and Wayne said, I said, who that? General Frankie. And I say, yeah, man, I'm me, man. And mm-hmm. me and him all have good vibes at the night. And him say, yo, a penthouse, me there, you know, come check me. Mm-hmm. That was the weekend. I think it was Saturday night, if my mind, if my memory. Either Friday night or Saturday night. I don't quite mm-hmm. remember. So, you know, bright and early Monday morning, me there a penthouse. Yeah. So, go a penthouse. The Monday morning, and the rest is history. Mm-hmm. From you got to Pentos because I know so then you didn't have to audition or anything to get in. You just were allowed to go straight in. Oh, we have someone in a way and wonder someone for come check in. I have the, uh, no audition. I show up at 56 Life Road. Mm-hmm. I'm big gate. The gate lock. I brother had the gate named Bunny. Tell him say, yo, we ain't wanna come check in. We ain't wanna some come check him. So I'm saying go call we in. And if anybody will know Pentos, no sir. Pentos, they're upstairs. Compared to where the gate there. Mm. So I had the gate and I'm saying go call we and a man go call we and I tell we and so somebody at the gate to him. So we come at the top of the step and see me and I tell Bonnie say, yeah man, a general Frankie, let him in. Mm. So the gate fly. And I just walk right in. I don't carry no crowd because me alone. Mm-hmm. Jump on a bus and reach up there. You see me say? Take a bus from Rockford, go to town, take a bus from town, come up slide road. Come off a of 56 life road and in it, I get in the first day. I go, I get in. All of my people wasn't so lucky because no. that big gate there. It's hard for come through the gate, never mind. After I come through the gate there, for go up the step, for go through Pentos gate. And when you go through Pentos gate, you know, mm-hmm. you go through the gate and then you still have to go through another part for go in at the studio. Now, through you go through the evil studio gate, means you must get in at the studio. You know, must get in the studio. You can't stay in that little lobby area there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And what was it like now? So this was your first time going into a studio now? No, 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 man. I visited a few studios before. Mm-hmm. But I thought about where opportunities start present itself. Mm-hmm. Based upon Wayne Wonder help. You know what I mean? But I visited a few, I visited a few studios before that. The first studio I went to was RJ's studio, you know. I went to RJ twice, and I two big artists came to RJ. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. First person ever took me to a studio, me a skitty ranking was Puddy Roots. Okay. Puddy Roots, because Puddy Roots come from Rockford, you know. And he heard us as youth in the era where I go on good. And he carried out the studio. I said, we never really get for record, but you know, studio thing, man. every time you go, you get for record right away, especially when you're a young artist. Sometimes you have to go and go watch your ropes and see what I go on first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because even because I know you're out east and Arrows was the big dub studio out east. Arrows wasn't around this time yet, though. No, sir. Arrows never even exist yet. The sound, mm-hmm. them time there. Like, Bill used to have him like a thing up in the yard. He used to live up on West Street or West Avenue. Well, I don't know if anybody were familiar with East, them know where King's Theater used to be. The road up, that's up, that's up Bill used to live where he used to own Arrows. Mm-hmm. I met Bill through Wayne Wonder, too. After me and Wayne start a par. I go up a billiard a couple of times because the dub plate car. That's where the studio really started out in his, in his house. Mm-hmm. But he did have the sound. The sound was always around. You know, I was been around from probably the 70s. Or, you know, or probably early in the 80s. I don't know exact, but from back then, Bill did have him sound. God rest him soul. Good man, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big right there. So, all right. So then you said that you um went to Penthouse. You linked up with Wonder. Did you actually get to record, or what was happening in the studio at that time? The when you got there the first time here, no. You know when you get there, you have to warm the bench. Look a bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, you have, to, you have to warm the bench. But just being there mm-hmm. was good because you know you are gain that experience. You see people where. Already have the experience and them I do them thing, the cutty ranking, the Tony Rebel, Apache Scratchy, just to name a few of the people that was around, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. On a day-to-day basis. I mean, people come through, Marcia Griffiths, Barry Salmon, people like those come through sometimes, you know what I mean? But the everyday staples was Wayne Wanda with Theme Local Crew, Cutty Rank, um, uh, rapper Freddy, Nada Ranks, and you know, Sebastian God rest him soul. And then, you know, I said the Apache Scratchy, the Tony Rebel, the, 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 the Marcia Griffiths come through. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just meeting and rubbing shoulders with people like those was was good. Because at least you make an improvement, you know, up the road every day, from the corner, hang out. It can get yourself in a problem, you know what I mean? You, you look on a more positive track, you know what I mean? For sure. And at this time here now was um you got to Pentos, everything was working out here now. Do you actually start to when did you actually start to record at Pentos? Um my first recording for Pentos was a song called Carbine for Blow. Mm. Carbine, yeah. It was a gunman show. But didn't that come out on the Rude Boy Kelly label? Yeah, yeah, Jeremy. Because you know, Jeremy is a man who not really sang it bad and he like the song, but him, you know, them time they now put them things up on Penthouse label. And more I put it on him on Rude Boy Kelly label. Because at that time, Dave was at the studio. Dave was the engineer them time. Like. And they had a label named Rude Boy Kelly where they would have put songs like those and not when I fit for airplay, put it like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then that was more like the street type of street type of label at that time. Yeah, man, that was an underground label, you know. Mm-hmm. And did you, when you linked with Wayne, now did you actually become a part of the crew with Wayne Wonder, Freddie, Nido Rex? And I know as a music man, Weber was over there too because he was playing Blackstone and all. So did you become a part of the crew, or you were just kind of linking Wayne, one of ways? No, man. Um, from a come that idea that me did it every day after that, you know, every day, every day I'm sure. It becomes mandatory to be there every day because your aim was to record. Mm-hmm. You see me, I say your aim was to hear yourself by record. And that was the opportunity where you could have get that you could have get a chance to do that. So on the daily, me have to just find myself on a bus and did every day. Till you know me, I fret to them become school and nod of them and everything till instead of sometime taking a bus to Penthouse, my probably I just go so boom and go up in a Dunkirk 
go meet up at Freddy Yard because Freddy Yard did come in like the HQ mm. where we and another would have link up there so and then now at them time we and one never even have a car yet. He made of, yeah, we used to have like a taxi bridge in was we and one of them taxi bridge in name Magnum. Mm. Magnum would have a ladder. So we'd have just load up in that ladder there and go to the studio. And Magnum would have just hang out there with the whole day. If we forgot to do some dub plate, we're gonna do it. And you know what I mean? Take your room back at night, start chat more. You know what I mean? I say, you know the ropes. Mm -hmm. On the road, so enough things are starting to happen now. So then when the first song that you recorded for Penthouse now, did they actually do anything? What happened when that song there came out? Nothing really happened. But it was good to know you had a record out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing major happened, but it was a start. <laughs> because even then, was your name still General? General no, man, no, no, man. From um, the General Frankie the Gun, that was out the door a, a long time ago. Yeah, Frankie Sly was now the name. From um, when I meet Wayne Wonder, you even though I said General Frankie that night, it, I was Frankie Sly by then. Okay, I can't tell you exactly when the change was made. But I know I was Frankie Sly by then. When I started going to Pentos, I was Frankie Sly. Okay, so your first recording, your first recordings are under Frankie Sly. Every recording is under Frankie Sly. Yeah. So then, when did the aliases started to come in, like the alias Bad Boy and the genuine Bali with the dot over the eye? When did those come in? Um, the genuine Bali and the dot over the eye was first. You know, that was from Pentos days. Who just started that? Because. Mm -hmm. I used to love ballet. Ballet was my favorite show back then. So like all the old man love clocks. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love clocks, but I love ballet. So I always wear some unusual ballet. So more time, you know, Bougie is a man with, as a DJ, he just love rhyme. So just off of the top of him, head one day, he just said, Frankie Sly, Jenny, ballet that over the eye because I had a ballet that day. And that does stick. So I said, the last bad boy came way later, that, mm -hmm. that uh, late 90s, when Let, we had the earliest project by then. Let's, you know not I mean? even, let's not even go down the road. Yeah, man, I just uh, tell you where the earliest bad boy. So Aye. Frank, um, the genuine ballet was way before that. Okay, you brought up his name, Bojo. How did you even link with or connect with Bojo in the first place? Um, we met Bojo through, um, one day, one, one, me and Wayne one that went to Winston Riley. Studio one day, I follow we and one of them to Winston Riley one day. You might go check Winston Riley, I showed some business on you know, the record shop, Chancellor, and I think it is. We used to have the record shop, and that's why we met Butch that day. We and I tell Winston Riley, say, I go a country the night, and just a regular conversation. I will see a little youth, I say, if he can come a country with me. You know what I mean? And he introduced himself and by this time we heard about him before, but we didn't know him. Because Stumpy usually tell us about a, a song named Stamina Daddy where did a mash up port more like a DJ named Butcher the so. By the time him introduced himself right away we and pick up who he was and say, Are you Stumpy always I tell about? Yeah, so it was a good vibes and I tell you where we could have find him, so we could have find him at Parkley in the night, because we'd have got a country, we'd have got to do a show for him. As a matter of fact, Wayne was going to do a show for Richie B the night. Mm -hmm. I was just tagging along with my brother. So I said, at that time, it was me and Wayne. I think Freddie had migrated by that. Nardo, I remember where Nardo was, so it was just me and Wayne. And he asked us if he could come. And the night we go pick him up and roll to country so that's how i really met him you know mm -hmm. yeah because it was i when i was speaking to wayne wayne was the one that said you were really instrumental in actually making Bujo come to that show in the first place yeah man car the night when Wayne come pick me up first you know the night that Wayne came to pick me up him never really there feel the radio's road thing the night like uh me, they are Sheffield Road that are way out of East. Mm -hmm. So, for drive from Sheffield Road, for go, we are Red Hills Road. And then we are got Clarendon the night there. I kind of say, you know, and I said, John, look at DJ there, so if you can pick him up, you know. We up at Red Hills Road, they say, night, and 
and I really feel it, you know. Mm-hmm. And me was the one who looked on him and said, yo, but you don't tell him, say, how far would for him? So, you know, me, I said, the right thing to do is, is, is go for him because you tell him, say, but you tell him from early, say, you know, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, so, we went for him that night. And he was there waiting, so just imagine if we didn't go. So me a lot of people have said them carry Bujuga penthouse and them carry. Mm-hmm. I ain't, uh, them probably carry him some other time, but me know how we how we got on to penthouse. You understand what I said to you was because of that night. Mm-hmm. Clarendon. Cause we got Clarendon that night then he marks we wonder for call him up and he destroyed the place. Destroy it. So when we come back at town the next day, we ain't tell Dave say, yo, you need to take a listen to that little DJ, yeah. Take a listen to that DJ, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's all. You know, from we tell Dave to do it, Dave going to do it. Because Dave and we na, was from school days, from Cub Scout days. You see me, I say? From primary school days. Them used to join the same Cub Scout. So them go way back. So, you know me, I say? Them respect each other. So if we said. Listen to you, I'm going to listen to him. And from Dave listening to him, the rest is history because he's a talent where I couldn't deny. Mm-hmm. So then now at this time here now, as you said, Freddie had migrated. Nardo probably migrated at the same time. Probably too, too yeah. So it's just you you and Wayne. So then now, is it now you, Wayne, and Bujo as the link right now? Yeah, man. Three the hard way, man. Wayne Wanda. And sometimes four hours ago, Sebastian was, was there too. But most of the time, mm-hmm. I treat the hard way. We ain't one like Frankie Sly, Bojo Wanton. Anyway, I the away. Did you get, when all three of you guys linked up, did you get your breakout song yet at this time, or you didn't get it as yet? Um, I got a few songs. Mm-hmm. We'll start making some nice. Yeah, Um, first song. I really start make some noise was a song called Grab It Up and the Punani mm-hmm. Rhythm for Jan Jan. For Jan Jan, yeah, man. Yeah. That was the first song where I really start make some noise. And then, Wah Wah Wah, on the Art Beat Rhythm, 666 at the Mark of the Bass, on the Cardiac Rhythm, for Wee Pow. Them three look a song there in the, the, the mix, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't think none of them was a breakout song. Wah Wah was solid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But Grab It Up was the one that really propelled you to people start paying attention. Yeah, man, Grab It Up. Grab It Up. Couldn't deny it. Mm-hmm. You have to play playing at the girl segment, you know? Yeah, because oh. I remember the same time, the Shabba, I got hard on it, you know, and then but Shabba, they have a couple of hit songs from the Punani rhythm. Girl, so that girl segment, the Grab It Up, would have to play night, it, you know? Mm-hmm. That the first song when I was stand up in a dance and I can't look forward to never hear myself tonight. What was that like those times actually hearing yourself have a song and seeing the people actually react to your music at this time? Here now? What did that feel like? Unexplainable. That's a great feeling when you hear your song. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people will up a DJ had the pleasure of hearing themselves on the radio first. We never really have that car. Grab it up was X rated. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't derogatory like some type of X-rated song we are here now, but uh, you know, yeah, my boy, so woman, I'm a jump and I'm a grab it up, and it was a good vibes. How did you even come up with that song in the first place? Buju gave me that idea, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Buju gave me that idea, grab it up. I wrote the song, but him gave me the idea, the punchline, the oh, so I'll grab it up, grab it up, give me the glamour to one of that. Grab it up, grab it up because you're something of, yeah, yeah, I got that from him. He gave it to me. And I wrote this song and we and they got a record for Jan Jan. And me and him go over there because I'm saying me and him are far. Most of the time, anyway, my got me and him. Mm-hmm. So go over there and we and record and tell Jan Jan for listen up on the rhythm and the rest was history. From there, so then now you got your song, both of them they're on the road and everything. So, what were some of the first moves you guys started to make now when Buja actually came into the camp with you guys? Remember, Buja exploded, you know? 
Bojo explode, you know, I say explode, but I mean explode, you know. Like, few DJ boss like how Bojo Bank and boss. Mm -hmm. So, right away, you know, say so I was there, like, him right hand or him left hand, because I was me and him away, no wonder. Mm -hmm. He was the monster in, in, in the thing. So, <clears throat> almost everywhere I'm going, I was there. You know what I say? Most of the tour them and them thing there. I opened the, I opened most of those shows worldwide. So worldwide, I mean worldwide. Run up in a year place a couple of times in Canada there. Back mm -hmm. then. Europe. You name it, Japan, all over. Worldwide, as I say. So was it a thing at this time where okay, Wayne's a singer, you're the DJ, Bujo's a DJ, where Bujo exploded. So then it's now like a thing where I wouldn't say you put your career on the back burner, but more attention was being paid towards Bujo. So then that's you're saying, okay, for the camp, this is how we're gonna run with it. That's just the way it was, because he gone had so much attention at that time, it was it did hard for anybody even read survive you know what i mean so most of the time it's like you just have to play that support in the role there that's just how it was you know mm -hmm. yes sir because you said you guys did a lot of shows right across the place the ones in jamaica the ones right across the globe yeah man worldwide as i said as far back as the far east japan you know mm -hmm. Because it was, again, it was the three of you guys on the road. You, Bojo, Wayne Wonder, and whoever else, I guess, he had brought Yeah, man, the whole penthouse crew. crew, you know, Twiggy was a part of that, too. Mm -hmm. Some of the time, Terry Gans, you know. Some of the show, them, Marcia Griffiths, Barry Saman. It depends on where, you know what I mean? The Madison Square Gardens and these places. Marcia Griffiths and Barry Saman was always a part of it, too. Uh, I, I don't think them was exclusively signed to penthouse, but... The relationship with them and Pentos, they were included a lot of times. So I was on a lot of those big bills. I was the one where grace the stage first most of the times back then. Do you remember any show that any show or shows that stick out in your mind, particularly around those times, the early shows that you'll never forget? Yeah, I'm in Madison Square Guard, man. Madison Square Guard, man, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Wayne was not those shows at that time we ended up at like a traveling issue. Mm -hmm. But was me, Beris, Marcia, Ojo, most of the times. Yeah. What was so memorable about those shows there in particular, the Madison Square Gardens? Just the Madison Square Garden. <laughs> so yeah, so a lot of people don't get that. All the artists don't get the opportunity there. And even though me never get it by my own merit, but just being there was good enough. You know what I mean? Those are historic places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another show that you remember those early times, probably something in Japan or somewhere else that you'll never forget, something that was so special that happened back then. A lot of shows, man. Japan. Japan was phenomenal. You know what I mean? Europe, Germany, the, the, the Holland the Belgiums, it was it was all big shows, festivals, you know what I mean? A lot of big shows, thousands of people. Yeah, a lot of big shows. You know, New York, the park, the park shows. It was all big shows. That's night after lot, night crazy. Yeah, man, yeah, man a lot of mem a memorable moment. Can I remember say, you talk about one of the biggest DJ for come out of Jamaica, if not the biggest, you know? Mm -hmm. See me, I say, the girl is all the other shenanigans, but you can't deny the talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So just being a part of that at the time was special, you know? And you know what's so crazy? As simple as you see it, remember, if you said, yo, you know what? Let's not go for him. Th this story right here could have been a completely different story that we're talking about right now. Completely. Just because you said, okay, yeah, let's just go for him. Yes, I. You know what I mean? Sometimes we make sacrifices, and sometimes the sacrifices benefit you, and sometimes it don't. But it's just life. You have to live with the choices you make. For sure. Good or bad. 
100% agreed. I know somebody else that you did a lot of work with back then too was Weepo from Stone Love. How did you connect with um, Weepo? It's a great man, one of the best men in the business. You hear me say it? I'll say it again. Winston Weepo Powell, one of the best men in this music business. Yeah, man. Um, I connected with him same, through the same way in Rwanda because you have to remember in a muscle. All music go back then. Mm-hmm. It's all you know. You can't just walk in and look at your talent, a lot of talent fall along the wayside because they're not a link. A whole heap of bad youth out there, you know, where never get the break, you know. Never even see the deer. <laughs> hmm. You know, I tell about a youth named Skitty Rank, you know, I tell you, so was ahead of me, Mike. He never really get the break. Mm-hmm. You see, me answer because me and him part ways from early out. Me meet a way in Wanda where put me on. He never meet nobody where put him on. You understand? I mean, after me get on, him come check me a couple of times and That's it, him come check me at that time, him there country, so him there come check me, you know, you come up from country and you go back down and you know, come up back there in a couple of months. You understand, you know music have a consistent. Mm-hmm. So, I say all of that to say this. A whole heap of youths with great talent never get the chance because they know nobody. So, I always have to tip my hat to Wayne Wonder just by telling me if you come check him up in Toast that day, there, I got mm-hmm. on. He might go record for Wee Power and him carry me. He might go wait record for John John and him carry me. And if somebody like that carry you, the producer will listen to you. And sometimes that's all you need, somebody to listen to you. A whole heap you not get a chance there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, Kyle. It's a grimy business. <clears throat> Very I much remember, so. I remember back then, <clears throat> studio time was so expensive. Nobody now we some studio time sometimes just to listen to somebody. And they're like, no, everybody have a little thing in them bathroom or in them closet. Back then, you had to rent studio time. A lot of people didn't own them own studio. Even we, Paul, mm-hmm. didn't own them own studio at the time. He would have worked somewhere. So if you go somewhere, you understand, I studio, I'm going to look on the time because the money I burn. So when a man, if a man get the opportunity for go around there, you better connect. If you're not connect, that's it for you. Because I think at that time there, Father Paul might have been recording out of Black Scorpio Studio at that time there. I think so too. Mm-hmm. Or, or maybe when I went, you know, I, try, I can't even remember clearly. I think we poured him studio by this time at him house. Mm. Yeah, I think he, he started out as at him house. I think when I first recorded him was at him house. And I do in the park or somewhere around one of them, on our, somewhere around that side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he was. He had his own studio, but it was at, at his house. Because one of the, one of the big songs you did for We Power was a uh, six six six. Yeah, how do you come? How do you come up with that song there? Well, at that time, six 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 was a kind of radical vibes. I mean, I feel at the time. At that time, I did a couple of songs where it was more reality songs. You know, that's just the vibration. I mean, I feel at that time. Man. At that time, they made me feel like me got all the rust. Okay. Yeah, me the whole of vibes at one at time. You know what I say, but mm-hmm. it never pan out, you know? Yeah, when I'm looking at the mirror sometime, man, I say, my face look rugged and... <laughs> yeah, I never really think of me that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I like groom my look as decent as I can be, you know? So, But at the time, it was a whole of spiritual vibe. It was a whole of good vibes at the time, man. If you remember, I came to do a couple of songs, 666, I want to see your face. Mm-hmm. That was for Penthouse. Yeah, that was Penthouse, Swing Easy Rhythm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those times, as you said, it was more like a conscious Rasa type of vibe, even though you didn't Rasa fully, but that was a type of vibe. Yeah, man, that's, a, that yeah, that's a, 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 a radical vibration at that time, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, who else was rushing up at that time there when you had rushed up in the camp? Was Bojo Russ already or this? Yeah, man, Bojo, he was on his way to. Mm-hmm. All of our people, they feel a vibration. That was a vibration where a whole, I think that was the era where a whole of man started rushing. 
Cape I mean, Cod and all of them there. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That was just a vibration. Where it's like a wave where did that pass through, you know? Mm-hmm. Paned. Remember Paned too? Enough money to rest at that time, you know? I heard. Now Yanzi. Yanzi yes. too. What about man that feel a vibration there, you know? Because I really heard it was Panhead out of everybody. He was really the first one to really kind of start rusting up out of everybody at first. I don't remember directly, but it, it could be possible because Panhead was always a radical youth, was a radical soldier. Good youth. Rest in, rest in peace, Panhead. My brethren too. For sure. How did you link with somebody like Panhead? Let me get you up. All right, this is Panhead. Mm-hmm. We kept a dance out of East. Young Pan Sheffield with a big dance, probably one of the biggest dance of a keeper at East Kingston car. This was 1992. And you know the power of Butcher at 1992. So, if you keep a dance and put Butcher Bantan on a flyer hmm. at a place like East Kingston, where no show no really keep a East like that. You know the entire East have come Rockford, Arborview, Bull Bay, Dunkirk, people from South, Raytown, Mount View. Everybody came to that dance at night. Mm-hmm. And regardless of all of the artists who we know, outside of me, we and one and Bushu Bantan, one artist alone showed up and supported us that night, and that was Paned. Mm-hmm. So it's from this, uh, we and Paned just had a link where it was just different. I'm going to give you a story about Paned. Mm-hmm. Panhead come up a penthouse one day, come check me. God bless him soul. And I was recording a song to penthouse. No, in penthouse. For shocking vibes. Because them tell me shocking vibes is so for penthouse. Mm-hmm. Me that record a song for the cut you with him. It was only me and a youth named Gary Jackson. It's so funny, you know. Gary Jackson passed away. And I didn't know until recently. I was seeing a post and somebody said, rest in peace, Gary Jackson. And I had to call Wayne Wanda. I said, yo, Wayne Wanda, Gary Jackson pass away? And we didn't say, look how long. Hmm. But I, w- I didn't even have an idea. So God rest in, re- rest in peace, rest in soul. Gary Jackson was an engineer at Penthouse. He used to work for Shocking Vibes. So I was recording a song for Shocking Vibes. I had a cut you with him. A song named Two Two. I wonder if you know that song. Look down in my tutu. I'm in the nozzle of my 45. If you want to stay alive, I'm in up like some of those guys. Yeah, me, I record a song that Panet come up there, come check me that day. There. Call me and say, that come check me and come check me. And yeah, me, I record it. So when I done record the song, me, I tell him, say, You're a type of rhythm, name in a Panet. You know, record a song from this. Shocking vibes, singing on. But I don't want to face the brother, you know. Mm-hmm. Kind of kiss him teeth and bend up him face and I said, I don't know to know them boys, you know. I said, but even though it was a shocking vibe session, mm-hmm. nobody was in the session but Gary Jackson. Because Gary used to do a lot of them recordings. I don't I, I think I hear Silver Cat talk about Gary Jackson too. Mm-hmm. I remember if it's on your program or some other program, I heard Silver Cat talk about him. So Gary used to record a lot of the songs. Normally, Patrick Roberts would have trust Gary Jackson. So if Gary record a song, I say it right a lot of times. From Gary past it, it's got to go You see what I say? So even though I'm kind of skeptical, I'm making no say, listen, Gary Jackson, this is a cool you thing or so. But they don't record. So I say, Gary said, go around the guy. And the man go around the one tech. Give me me African princess. How me me love her up? Eh, Patrick don't know how that song the record. What me say? Patrick don't know how that song the record. And me and Gary Jackson. And me encourage him and say, yo, bro. And I'm going to record. Same day me and him record. I remember that, that was probably the last song he record before mm-hmm. he died. Yes, yeah. that was his last set of music then, yes? All right. And me I tell you, that's how it, that's, I mean, come check up in house today. Yeah. Me and Gary Jackson alone was in the studio. Yeah, man. So, God rest in... in, in. So, I mean, so, Patrick probably didn't even know that it's true. Patrick didn't even know it record, but uh, Gary mm-hmm. Jackson, based upon my influence, and mm-hmm. that big song, I think it blew up because because him dead, it just blew up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
But you see, this is why I like to have these conversations because again, these little minor details yep. have some amazing things behind them. You understand? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You just hear the song, but you don't know. You don't know the song. You don't know the history behind it. Because normally you wouldn't get up on it for a shocking vibes there because him and them wasn't like that. Yeah. See me as Yeah, but sometimes circumstances make we what we are. Mm -hmm. Just by him showing up that day. Yeah, that's, man. That's wild right there still. Yeah, and then me. it was so good. I felt so good after him died for no say. When me hear it a play, he just put a smile on my face because I know what happened with that song. Mm -hmm. Even though I was so upset that him, him die and all the way him die. Because a youth was so radical, or a youth was so cool, a youth where they have so much offer. But at least him left me with a good memory. Because it's probably the last time that I saw him alive too. Because a little after that, I got to Japan. Mm -hmm. And I went there to Japan, him dead. I went there to Japan, me is upon it dead. Yeah. Because I know talking about that, that you guys, you had something to do with the song Murderer. Because I thought Murderer was dedicated to Panhead. Yeah, man. The same night, the same night we heard that him died. We wrote that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we heard, we heard that Panhead died. We get a story. We done the show the night that Japan and Buju go make a call, and him came back with the news. The news was that Ninja Man killed Paned. That's how we got it. I mean, with a way on the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. That's how we heard it first. You know what I mean? I mean? A few days later, we hear say nothing like us about. You know, as a Jamaican people spread rumor, you know? But, but was Ninja Man, did Ninja Man and Paned have a vibes or that was just not, the first name that came up? Not that I know of. I'm just telling you what we heard. That's how, it came, that's how we heard. That's what we heard first. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a true. We're bridging and it hurt with so much. We didn't sleep that night. We write that song that I see him night there. Hmm. Yeah, man, and the following day, at the sound check, would you call for the Far East with him and work it out? And it's one like a like a recording. So came back from Japan a few days, job for the same Far East. From DJ for German until German so Far East with him. German sent for the musicians. I don't remember who, if it was Steely and Cleavy, which probably it was. But the musician came and laid on the rhythm, man. The rest is history. Massive, massive, massive song. But again, yeah, man. Look, look how all of this started from you telling Panad, you just come in and come sing this song to you guys going to Japan, for you coming up with another massive song with Bujo, which was Murderer. Yes, sir. Big song. Yeah. Big song. It's just so wild how this music business goes from time to time. Definitely. You know what I mean? All right, you guys are doing your stuff here now. You you guys came back from Japan. You're still linking up now. You did um. You said you were doing more radical stuff because this is when you did uh, want to see the face of Celestia, but yeah, you weren't really rushing up. Yes, man. Yeah, want to see your face. All them time, I made a twist up, but I never start rushing. You saw, you saw a lot tall here. Me saw the braids and so I start to twist up my hair. I made a grow my beard and them thing. That but as I said, me never do like the look. So it yeah. never lasts, you know. All right. So when did you start to really link heavy with Dave Kelly? Because you said he was around for me linked when one the first time at um yeah, Penn Post. Remember, remember said Dave, you guys really link? No, me and Dave, we and Dave always link. Remember I said Dave was the engineer at Penthouse, you know. So every mm -hmm. day with that Penthouse, Dave was there, you know. Every single day, you know, back then, you know. So you know, I, I, when 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 Dave split on the farm, Madhouse, mm -hmm. he still worked at Penthouse. Okay. You understand? Every Thursday and Friday was exclusively Madhouse days. So would I see him every Thursday and Friday, see him way? And that was during the time when I when I recorded Wah 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 and the art beat rhythm for him too. Yeah, so you know we, we and David always link. From the first day I came my, my come up and toast me and him link. It's not a man we talk to all of our people, so I'm mean, not gonna tell you say me and him was the best friend at that. In the beginning, but we grew to know each other and till our link, you know. Mm -hmm. At this time here, were you ever really officially signed to either Pentos or Matos? No, never, never, never signed to nobody. Mm -hmm. But um, 
the link was even even Madhouse when the alias project, even though it was alias. I don't even I don't think nobody did. we 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 just had agreements. I mean we was so close net nobody never have to really sign nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Did you have a manager back then in these times or you just going with the flow of the music? Um during the time when I was at when oh, ELS project, I had a manager. Mark Pinnock was my manager from Natural Bridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause that was like my bridging from school. Yeah, cause I went to Ulmas together. He's a man who was always a double in the music. Even though he's a businessman, he loved the music. And cause I think he was the man, he was the first man where discovered where discover Lexus too, you know. Okay. Yeah, and I yeah, discover conscience too. Yeah, says so I'm on a wife talent too, so mm-hmm. him did you know me I say he was managing me at that time, even though I was at Maddows, I was at Elias, but I was signed to Natural Bridge. So your first song that you really did for the Madhouse, Dave Kelly, but I think this even came out on the extra large label, was Wawa at this time here on the heartbeat. Yeah, I don't remember if it was extra large or Maddows label, but that was the first official recording for Maddows, yeah, heartbeat really. Wow, How did wow, you- wow. How did you come up with that one there? Because again, remember, we seen the the you were giving them more the Celestia songs. Now you're back onto the girl songs. How did you come up with this one here now? I wouldn't even really consider it as a girl song. You know? mm-hmm. But it's a girl song, but it's <coughs> all right. <laughs> it was just an experience I had mm-hmm. with a female, you know, and she'd behave like a real ambulance, you know. She did us wah, 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 everything, and it just, yeah. Um, I, I, I must say, me used to have no fear. So mm-hmm. I'm going to braid me here one night, and the chick who I braid me here, she have a friend, who was just an ambulance. She have a little man, and the man bring her a whole bag of goodies, and she have go through the bag. Meanwhile, my ear did that do, me I hear her go through the bag, and she had to take out everything where the man bring. Fear the man work at a pharmacy and bring a bag of goodies from the pharmacy. Fear everything was selling a pharmacy. The man bring the man bring up the postcard, the man bring Q Tex, Betna Feet, Tampon, mm-hmm. everything, lipstick, Fenzik at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and she had got through the bag and everything she take out, she have a, she have a, you know, she have a complaint, you know. Mm-hmm. Like she say, yo, me tell him said a the 24 pack of tampon him for bring for me. And I'm gonna bring the 12 pack. I tell him say I want the pink bet my feet and I'm gonna bring the blue and him bring the blue one and tomorrow when him come I tell him say I want this my wah 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 wah. But then I listen, I say it's not my business, but I'm right there and I'm hearing everything. Cause our friend in my era I breathe it and I may listen. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I just had to say something. I say, yo. But you know, not easy. Imagine the man bring a bag of goodies for you. Yeah. And remember, me did I hear the conversation. So it's not a man who should do it, you know. It's a man who does a try a foreign and the man bring gifts for you. And tomorrow, when him comes, she'll tell him, say, I never the 12 she want, or the 24, I never the pink she want, or the blue. She wow, wow, wow. I'm going to say, you just wow, 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 wow. <laughs> and when I said it, it just kind of. I say a sound like a siren. Mm. And it just connected. You know, right away, I just knew it had to be a song. So As you know, an artist, go, you just knew. Yeah, man. You, you know, I mean, it came natural, but once it come out of my mouth, I knew say, it's a song. Mm. Because I basically scold her. I say, yo, tomorrow when the man come before you go hug him up and love him and show some appreciation. You gotta tell him, say you want this, you want that, you want this, you want this. You just wow, 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 wow. And by the time I said that, I say you sound like a siren. And it just connected. Mm-hmm. And we just know says so a song. So I'm gonna go home and I slept on it and woke up in the middle of the night. It just came to me in the middle of the night. Girl, you wanna say ambulance? I read your care, but every time I turn it on the DJ and Dale Fara, ambulance, our fire brigade, every time you hear the wah wah, I start get the woman, them wah 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 wah, everything, who am gold chain and them. Yeah, man, I start to vibe it. I just know, say, 
it was different, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Next day, ca- next morning, I'm gonna call Wayne and I'm gonna check him and me and him actually write the song. Okay. But you know what I mean? I had the destruct of it, but by him putting in fame like a two cent, make the song more solid. Mm-hmm. Cause two head always are better than one, and at that time, that's how we wrote. A lot of songs we wrote together. For anyone away, whether for me and we and we and me, Bojo, or, that's what we wrote. Mm-hmm. That's why the song them is so bad because it had three, four, five different people impact. I never like you alone, just sit down and bust your brain and write a song. Mm-hmm. You have an idea, you can bring it to your brain, and I'm going to help you bring it out the right way. But a lot of time, you have something that goes away there. And another man with another idea bring it that way there and it sounds better going that way there. Yeah, you know. You understand. There's four names I'm gonna ask you about because I know you guys were all in the camp. I want to know how they connected to the camp in the first place. Louis Culture, Daddy Screw, Donovan Steele, and Frisco Kid. All right. Remember, you know. Even though I I was affiliated with both. There was still Maddows and there was Pentos. Mm-hmm. So after the split of Maddows and Pentos, remember me and we and Butch there apart. See, and so even though we and Dave was bridging, Dave go found Maddows. Mm-hmm. So even though we are Maddows, we and David cool and, and him having Maddows, we were still at Pentos. You see me, I say? Mm-hmm. So. I don't remember how Louis came into Maddow's, but I mean, once Louis come in and I met Louis, 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 Louis was such a calm soul. For me, meet a Louis culture, he and him are one of the humblest, coolest youth you can meet. Mm-hmm. You see me, I say? So, the Frisco part, I don't even know how Frisco, I heard General B gave a story how that he had to record for Dave, meet Dave and him carry Frisco. So I can't tell you exactly how a lot of that started. Mm-hmm. Screw is from East. So Screw was a selector. Screw is set up on Blackstone mm-hmm. with Weber and Jumbo. So Screw could have come in and, and number. As I said, when Dave farm him crew, I can't tell you exactly how he farmed it, the original models. Mm-hmm. I would be lying if I tell you because as I said most of the time I was at Penthouse. Even though we and Dave cool, would have show up on them session them and them have him look a cool. Screw on my birching, cause me a screw, grow. Me a screw, grow. I say grow, I mean grow. Me a screw go way, way back. What about them from Blackstone days? Cause me used to DJ from Blackstone to the East. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, you know what I mean? So, I can't tell you exactly. Because I said, David had doing thing over there, so I even know I was bridging, but remember, I said, we're still over here, so I'm in our own business, too. So even somebody like Terra Fabulous, you wouldn't be 100% how that link came in? No, I can't tell you how Fabulous came in, because Fabulous was at Penthouse, too. Remember, I said, Fabulous record for Penthouse, you know. Garrett, you know, if you uh, come see the, remember Penthouse, you know. So mm-hmm. originally, Fabulous came to Penthouse, I think, Stumpy. Mm-hmm. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I, I probably can go up on a limb and say I probably Stumpy the make a link there and bring him up. Cause he was from Portmore and Stumpy was from Portmore and Stumpy was a, a bridge for enough of the work going up. Cause I remember Portmore was an emerging community where hmm. had so much talent and Stumpy was a in the street youth over there. So if my memory serves me right, I probably Stumpy, but he was originally at Penthouse. Mm-hmm. You see me, I say? But when Dave, when they split now and Dave, you know, me says, I look at you, because Jeremy never do. As I say, I will have people that did get. Car, because I bought you, all the people wouldn't get the shine with them, forget. So, the split of Pentos and Maddows was one of the best things I could happen for, like a Terra Fabulous. Mm-hmm. You see me, I say? Cause I remember saying enough of them tune in you know, a general. You better add uh, that on a coffin and pull on a penthouse tune them tune. Yes. So fabulous was that penthouse. So I knew fabulous. Mm-hmm. Cecil, I know Cecil. Hmm. You see what I said? 
<laughs> yeah, what we do, sir? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. It was a, a lot of times it was people a forget it was how a talent, big. It, it was a talent we cannot be, we couldn't underrate, we couldn't deny either. Mm -hmm. But, as I say, the splitting make him emerge better because him end up in a yard where a female yard, mad house, a female place, go over there, him at a the big DJ. You see me, I say? Mm -hmm. He's not taking away nothing from Louis or Screw. Because too big DJ too, but Fabulous was the man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely because that was, there was actually like two versions of Madhouse. There was the early Madhouse, which was like the Terra Fabulous, the, um, yeah, the man, the Larry Minor, the the Louis Coach, the Donovan Minor. Donovan Steele, yeah. yes. And then there was the ELS project now, that uh, after we met the shift from Penthouse to Madhouse now, me and Wayne Wanda. And then Baby Sham came in. Okay, so tell me how that shift even came in in the first place. Because all you guys were originally part of Penthouse, including mm -hmm. Dave. He left. You guys still stayed for a while. And then you guys went over. How did all of that shift take a, take place in the first place? Remember, sir, I'm saying Dave was always a virgin. Because I remember saying, no, I'm Penthouse. I still record for Dave. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. And you understand what I said to you? We in the same way. After, I don't know what happened. I can't tell you what happened with Dave and Screw and, 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 and Fabulous them, but there was a time when Dave still a work at Penthouse and every Friday and Saturday was Maddow's days. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the days I didn't see no Louis, I didn't see no, no Screw, I didn't see Fabulous. And Dave had his studio session. So it was Spraga Benz. General Degree, sometimes a Mad Cabra, Frankie Sly, a Wayne Wanda. Can no matter why, you know, remember, I don't know, I don't know if you forget what the last word Ronnie Williams said before he died. He said the show must go on. Mm. So, for whatever reason, the show did not, Dave, in Maddow's thing, did have to go on. So, mm. That's what happened. Frisco was there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Baby Sham came in as a little kid at the time, as a youngster. And that's, that's feeling the missing, missing places, being a man. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. How did even the link with Spraga and Baby Sham come up now? Because again, as you said, this was way, you Wayne Bojo, and then you guys are doing your own stuff. So then how did Spraga Benz and Baby Sham now come into the fold? I'm going to tell you a little story. Mm -hmm. When I know Baby Sham, I must Spraga there apart. Mm -hmm. That was even before Assassin and Spraga. I knew Baby Sham through Spraga. Spraga, uh, I remember the same swing easy rhythm I made up on. Oh, I see your feet. Remember Spraga and um, Baby Sham had a combination. Uh, Spraga brought him to the studio that day. No cock come in here. Beer swing swing in here. We in the brain here. You understand what I mean? I, say? Mm -hmm. I think that was the first time I met Sham. That was the introduction. So, I Spraga out. You see me, I say, I have to give credit to your credit is Joe. Mm -hmm. I spraga response to bring him around, maybe through the whole Dwayne Park link. I spraga used to play a song from Dwayne Park named La Benz. I heard mm -hmm. the whole topless crew with Escuff for them and Daddy All them. And... You see me, I say, yeah. I heard Wayne give a version, say, Daddy All bring him come for a, a, a dub play to a combination, and that was. Oh, he met him, but me meet him through Spraga bring him bring him in around because Spraga used to come up in house. Spraga is a youth where him respect. Anyway, him go, him get him respect as a youth. Just in militancy. So him come up in house and Jeremy and the rate him and respect him too. Dave rate him and respect him too. So Spraga bring a youth, come and say a female youth. Nobody now go question that. Hmm. Say me as a came in now so then when you got to when you transferred over now to madhouse this is when you the alias project was born yes i who was all part of alias project at this time here now the alias project was consist of um we and wonder frisco kid mr easy baby sham 
Frankie Sly and the Stranger. Mm-hmm. Stranger, which is which is um Dave Kelly. Well, it's Kelly Belly. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. How do you guys even come up? Because this is one of these most creative type of groups where it's like, at this time here now, you guys are really experimenting with the music at this time here now. Definitely. How did you guys come up with this alias thing in the first place? And what was that supposed to mean or do? Well, the alias project, it was a movement basically at the time. We used to have a, a motto where we are say. It's not about the recognition, it's not about the hype, it's not about egos or individual. It's about the music and the work that needs to be done. So, at that time, it was just the music we are dealing with. And it was just a set of youths with a lot of ideas, a lot of creativity. We just try to make good music, different type of music. We just did we just did want to make it music at the time. So Dave with the vision, Dave Kelly with the vision at the time. You know, he always have a vision for music. And he may not just put all the crew here together because he may not crew fall apart. And as I said, the, work, the show must go on. You see me as I said, the show must go on. Mm-hmm. So we had a new youngster with a hunger which was Baby Sham. You know me I say we had Frisco Kid, cause all of us had an alias name. That's how, that's how the idea came. Alias. All of us, even though my name Frank is like, me had an alias. We ain't one that name, we ain't one of our alias. What was everybody's alias, if you remember? Frisco Kid, Bops. You know more could I look a bop there? Mm-hmm. We ain't one that was surprised. Frank is like, was juke them. Juke them? Yeah, juke them. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah, Dave Kelly was changer. Baby Sham was Herman, the cookie monster, you know? I can't, I don't remember easy alias name, you know? He's, what was easy name again? I don't even remember right now. Mm-hmm. But we all had a alias name, you know? It was just... Some you talk where have fun with music, you know. We just that have fun with the music. Mm-hmm. That was a good time for music, you know. We just we just was experimenting, having a lot of fun. And that's why the music them this are bad, cause they were done, most of them was done effortlessly. Mm-hmm. It was just done by us having fun. Just to enjoy ourselves in the studio and, and make music. You, you could tell when you listen to the music, you, you could tell that this was fun. We're experimenting and we're trying because you guys were the first one to bring in this word into the music scene, which was Fossey. Fossey Hoa. You guys were the first ones that actually put that on a record. You understand? Definitely. I'm a of fact, I was the first one. Okay. Fossey. I mean, I had a yeah. Fossey boss. Yeah, but Fossey was just a word. All right. Fossey. The definition of fussy is lesion of the skin. That means it's a sore. Mm-hmm. You know, sore can have all pus in it, you know? <laughs> so, anyway, fussy was just a substitute for the other word. Because, you know, as Jamaican, I do think Jamaican love to tell you about when they come Either you are, you are pee, mm-hmm. or they tell you about your mother. You see what I say? So, Fussy was a word where for substitute for the P word. Because we go, even though we grew rough, we grew good. Mm-hmm. So it was a word where you could have used in front of big people. You understand what I say? You could have looked at a man in front of your grandmother and say, you're fussy. <laughs> And it not so on the way, but if you tell him, say, yeah, poop mm-hmm. in front of your grandmother, that was a no. You understand where I come from? To the point of me, here, all my father I tell my little brother, say, yo, he's a fussy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a thing that you guys came up with and put it out there like that. Yeah, man, Dave and him creative genius, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. 
because your song Fussy Fussy Hole, this was on the re re rhythm. This was the first time I really remember hearing this word here. Like, what is this word here? Yeah, man, but even though you wonder what is this word, you could have relate right away. One hundred percent. You know exactly what we are substituting mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, real talk. You get it. There was and a until this thing. day, mm-hmm. almost twenty-five years later, people still have said it's still a word that has been used, even though sometimes we don't get the credit or forget, but people still mm-hmm. use it. That's why. Because me say you still it, it's so universal. You can still call a man fussy. And it not sound like, it not sound derogatory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Because another thing that you guys did with these experimenting, you guys were the ones that put the hard P on Pussua. Pussua. That oh. was you guys that did that again. How did you guys come up with these things that you guys were doing at this time here now? We are work with a musical genius. Stranger. Mm-hmm. Dave Kelly Belly. Well, Kelly. Yeah, man, he's a musical genius. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, some things we come up with. Yeah, for but you have to understand. It's like it's life, you know. Everybody have a gift, you know. Mm-hmm. That's just his gift. Yeah, man, he's just a genius in what he does. Can't take that from him. Yeah, have to give him flowers. Because even back then, with a lot of the recording, because I know Dave Kelly, a lot of people would say Dave Kelly, he likes to write and produce a lot of the stuff. Even your songs, were you, was Dave writing them too, or you were writing most of them, or was a effort between the whole camp to come up with these stuff here? As I said, nothing like a collective effort. Mm-hmm. Five head, better than one. Two head, better than one. Three head, better than one. Four. So once, when they're in the studio, and if it's a Frisco kid song, for example, Mm-hmm. And we all have an input. It's not better than if a fiscal alone is sitting and write it. If it's a way one that song, and a way alone is sitting and write it, it's not better if a three are with it or a five are with it. Mm-hmm. You understand? So a lot of the songs were a collective effort. A lot of them was Dave Kelly idea, but the collective effort, that's, that's what made them so bad. In a good way. Mm-hmm. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Because I know another one. This is again where you guys took this to another dimension. Was when David put out the bug rhythm and you would put out haters anthem. How did you come up with this here now? All right, so the haters anthem. That's one of the most personal songs I've ever recorded. Because it's a time of my life when me I got you a face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me I got you. A little dark moment where a lot of things that go on in my life. Where some youth did really, some youth did hate for me out of east, and mm-hmm. it, it created a lot, of, a, a, a lot of tension. Yeah, man, and through the whole thing there, we have to just take music for it. You know, me as a cause. We could have taken violence for it. But they know how that go. Police win that. Hmm. See me as eh? So you have to be smart, you have to think. And at the time, I probably would have did move out of context if I didn't have good friends. Hmm. Yeah. If I never have good friends at the time, if I never have my friend them around me, the Yelias project, I probably would have charged a murder. Yeah, probably there would be no Frankie slide to them. Probably that dead or I'm that they are prison. I probably just I look for release from prison. Cause when I'm a little bit I end up charged all for murder. God rest him soul now, he may up dead now too. You see me I say so. That was a dark moment, a dark period in my life where and there's a lot of things that happened. And the bug rhythm came around and there was so much things happening in my life. I have to just write about what I go on in my life, me and my friend them. Mm-hmm. I, remember, I remember distinctively, distinctively. When me and Dave sit down the day, Dave look for me, look straight in my eye and I say, boy, I juke them. Yeah. So much tune in your life right now. You have so much things that go on in your life. Where. <laughs> yeah, man, the real thing I tell you, there's so much things to write about. So 
That's why he, uh, that's one of the the most personal song I've ever recorded. The haters on them. Mm-hmm. Every line in it means something to me. Yeah, man. Would you say at this time you had one foot in the industry and one foot in the streets at the same time? Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Because even though I yielded temptations, as I said, I have good friends around me that kept me grounded. Mm-hmm. Especially Dave Kelly at the time. Because there was a time when as quiet and as simple as we and one that is. We and I say, yo, Sly, <laughs> what am I dealing with? What am I dealing with? Yeah, man. Hmm. Yeah, man. And Dave Kelly said, Frankie Sly, and I listen to we and one that. <laughs> man say, yo. Mm-hmm. Fast so real to me, I tell you, fast soul and mash up the place. Mm-hmm. I draw them out and dry out. Now make them dry out. Real talk, me I tell you, Dave Kelly said that to me. Mm-hmm. So we and I say, yo, Sly, what do I want to deal with anything or anything? <laughs> as simple as you say, we in there. Don't take him simple. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, what does a Sly, what do I want to deal with? Anything or anything. Mm-hmm. And Dave says, Sly, now listen, we in wonder. Don't make them dry you out. And those was the type of words that kept me grounded. I know, say, here what? Yeah, man, that's why sometimes you have to have good friends around you. And I that, you know, with enough of the youth them right now in Jamaica. Where. So if they have bridge in where would I show them, say, yo, that's not necessary. <laughs> A lot of youth wouldn't go down the wrong path. Because I could have gone down the wrong part at that time. Then. I could have probably beat it up to the bend, 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 and a bag of things could happen. Mm-hmm. And my life would have different today. But as I say, we'll have good bridging will keep us grounded, you know? Yes, I. So was it more like a situation where they figured you shouldn't be getting this spotlight now for whatever the reason is because... I guess you're from this area, they figure somebody else should get it. Where was all the bad mind and hate really coming from? I know the ghetto, you know. Jamaica and ghetto, you know. And if you know the ghettos of Jamaica, you relate to any little youth in, a, in a the ghetto, mm-hmm. most of them have a story where sometimes you even chat to your neighbor, even though it's a fence separate, you know. Mm-hmm. One don't agree for whatever reason. You understand what I mean? I say sometimes I'm on a great, I'm on a bad mind even for a shirt, you know. A shirt that look nice and you put it on and come out and you get two compliments from the girls and two girls. I say, what a nice shirt, you look nice like. And I you just, the next you just chew him probably the light that girl. Eh? Mm-hmm. And she tell you, say, that shirt that look nice for you. He just start eating. So I just get a lot of Jamaica. And I tell us the girls, way. People eat pie for different reasons. Hmm. So me just still have some youth who just say eight and a nine and a ten, you know? Yeah, man, and a bunch of necessary stuff them they made a eat for, you know? Them are eat. Most of the eating they are come from just so me a flex. Because as I said, remember, you know, but tell us if I'm me, me, it we ain't one of the night there. Mm-hmm. Up at done one. I me start shoe out and go to the studio. My life change. So I don't come on the corner, come sit down no more. And I eagle. I'm in the studio the whole day. And sometime at 12, 1 o'clock at night, we in a drop my home. Hmm. Or Buju a drop my home. So I'm gonna see you apart. We in one night and Buju a apart. And it's not like you switch by your friend them, but the time where you used to give them, you don't have the time to feed them no more. Because you try to do something with your life. And a lot of people, I just Jamaica, they don't do nothing to feed them life, so they don't like that. You have some people that are glad for you, but some are not glad for you. That's just the ghetto. Yeah, man. Natural. Crazy. Because even keeping in the same vein there, I knew in 2000s on the bounce rhythm, you came out with, you know, 
You know what yeah, I mean? Man. This was another one of your... This is in that same type of... Yeah, man. Then I'm a thing there. I tell you at the time, I just write about my life. I just want to go on in my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. The first thing mm-hmm. I'm slipping you know? up. I fit for me hip, you know? Only for extra clip, you know? Box of all of the tip, you know? She clear up my grip, you know? For bust up all the blip, you know? Never be a friend, you got me sustained. So I push on you, skating you know? up. Boy, I play a hit, you know? Missy said them in a beat, you know? Wait with us and wait, you know? Dying for about them late, you know? Trying to test my feet, you know? Never be a friend, you got me sustained. Last time I pint up in you know? a them face, you know, treat them in them ways, you know, think them would have different it, chase the boy you're chasing, you know, ready for them case, you know, for one and all them places, you know, never go up and dig up and says that, I'm going tell them, say, don't you try for this, my car, my naga run, me yes, and that, them love to flip up on them chubby some, and all the pint of paste the body like a bubble gum, make them mama come on them nine like a yam fish and bun. Yeah, man, them sang the personal to I, man. True life story, you know? Hmm. Because when, when those songs came out, this was like when Mataran was hot. Stone Love was still crazy at those times. Fire Links, fully loaded and all those things. You see when that song dropped, boss? Yeah, man. Maji, man. Maji, Maji at the time. Maji was a man. Maji was a man at the time. I'm going to get a story about Maji. Because mm-hmm. sometimes some of the man them go like they remember, you know. Yeah, man. And... That are the part of the business sometimes when I don't understand. Mm-hmm. All right, it's a matter on. All right, I wasn't really familiar with matter on until the fully loaded with the broke out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know much about him. I know of him and the Addis and the night they were Ricky Chopa down in a Portmore Entertainment Center and when Chopa killed them and whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's basically the little I knew about him. But it's when broke out I make. When broke out with him I make. Dr. Dre from Renaissance. Mm-hmm. Our virgin, Dr. Dre was there with us every day. Mm-hmm. In the studio, because Dr. Dre, our virgin. And Dr. Dre was there with us every day when this when read him I make. And Dave Kelly, I tell him, say, yo. You know what, listen, go bust up the beach. Can't fully load it and fall with it, it. And Dave said, you know what, listen, go bust up the beach. And mm-hmm. I said, you mean? And Dave tell him, say, you can't get it for go bust up the beach if you are going to bust up the beach as Dr. Dre. If you are going to bust up the, the beach as Dr. Dre, you can't get it. Mm-hmm. But not as Renaissance. I don't know what was going on with him at Renaissance at the time. But yeah. that's what he told Dr. J. Mm-hmm. But you know, Dr. J and all of him sound. So the kind of hard for him, you know? By this time, Killer tell Dave, say, yo, Matarana come for it, you know, give Matarana it. Dave said, Mata who? I must say, yeah, man, Matarana. And him, 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 him present the case for Matarana. Bounty Killer did. Mm-hmm. You know? And Dave listen, because at the same time, they ever met the song them, him know a fire, him know say full load in him want it break, but him still never decide because I tell you, say, he might introduce it to Dr. J. So he not really know who I go play it. It's probably going to be Stone Love. More likely, it probably would be Stone Love. Mm-hmm. But Killer, so you have to give Killer, him, 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 you have to give Bounty Killer him props for that. Killer plead the case for Mataran without Mataran even there. Bounty Killer say, yo, Mataran, give Mataran it. Hmm. See? So, as we said, Dave Kelly, listen. And if you even add to it, Killer pick up the phone and call Mataran a foreign and say, Yo, when you come to Jamaica, I like him. This probably would have been the mid- midweek before. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. him. I say, May I come Friday or Saturday, whenever, but he might come closer to the weekend. And Killer say, yo, as you come to Jamaica, call me. So Killer is responsible for that. So by this time now, him done play the case for Matara and forget it. Forget the broke out with him. Mm-hmm. So we say, all right, we're going to put some dub plate, ponder it in. 
for Matara. Because I remember you have a juggling where I make, you know, the, the broke out juggling. So, Bunty Killer Vice dub. I don't remember exactly which dub him did. He probably did the Showtime song on it, if, if my memory serves me right. I voiced on it, my, my, the Fassi. We ain't want the voice on it. Baby Sham voice on it. I don't remember who else, but mm -hmm. a nice dub package went on the rhythm. Plus mm -hmm. the song them. So Matara and a silver platter there waiting for him. So you know as him come off of the plane, him call killer. Think on the Friday evening if my memory serves me right. Mm -hmm. Or the Saturday evening, I think or the Saturday. Come on, him call killer and killer tell him, say, yo, tell him which part for forward run of the studio. And him come that at the first me I meet Matara. And him come, and when him come, the dot was there waiting for him with all the dubs. See? So watch this now. Remember me come from East. Mm -hmm. Arrows there are East. The dub them have a cut because them, them can't go play. Them can't play upon the dot. Mm -hmm. So, even though I get the dub them everything, I know he might pay for the dub them. Dave Kelly pay for them dub them. Dave give, gave me the money. Because remember him, he's a taxi, whatever, bring him come to the studio. Mm -hmm. Kill and I care him got arrows go cut them. So them ask me for take on that job that night. Being as east of my place, I carry my tire and go cut them double. No, I'm say God rest Bill Soul the own arrows. Late night, it's late the night, probably eight, nine o'clock. So I get on my phone and I call Bill and I say, yo, Bill, may I come out to come cut some door. What time I close? And Bill say, yo, I close, may I close, you know. Mm -hmm. And I say, yo, Bill. That's why I tell you some man no member. I say, yo, Bill, me I come cut some tune. I tell him the, 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 the occasion, the fully loaded tune, then we are going to mash up the world tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And me I say, yo, me I beg you. And I say, the respect. Remember, me used to go up in my yard. We ain't that. So me and Bill had a good relationship then time. Then. Mm -hmm. They have given me the money for cut the dub them. If my memory serves me right, it was six dub plate. That a 24 song at the time. Six dub. Mm -hmm. Whatever was dub plate money, I remember exactly what was the price at that time. But I'm giving the money for cut, and me him give the money. So matter I never pay for them dub them. Mm -hmm. Give me the money for cut them, and as me say, he's at my place, so me a care him go out there. So in a my little under civic, them telling me I have my own car, me have a little under civic, my first car. Mm -hmm. Me don't know him. Take him in my car, and we drive go hours the night. I stop like me a broke. I'm reach out of Elliston Road, for up a Winner Road. You know, still put because we have to catch Bill mm -hmm. for cut the dub them. You see me? Reach out arrows and out of the respect where Bill have for we him. Wait for we. Mm -hmm. I, I went out go out there and I said, me, me give me, me pay for six, me go for pay for six dub plate. Bill looked at me and said, Frankie, pay me for four. So I get money for pay for six and Bill collect for four. So I end up keep two of the double plate money in my pocket. Mm -hmm. So I end up get all gas money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give me the gas money. I mm -hmm. never need no money from him. But I just, I just show you all, all, everything. And the dub them cut. The next day. All right. Remember, you know, I live at East, you know. I could have just, him could have find him where go home the night. Mm -hmm. I end up having a car got put more the night. I'm mad at him. I'm mad at him time there. I don't know if you remember, but I remind him pan podcast tonight. Mm -hmm. Pan muscle tonight. Remember good no matter on, man. Remember no man. <laughs> All right. Can everybody remember? Mm -hmm. yes. That's crazy. All right. So sometimes I just show you how the event. Karim go out in mother yard the night, drop him off and end up come back to my yard. Or I think I probably stay at Port more tonight. They call him time there. I have a yard at Port more too. I remember exactly what, yeah. And then the next day was fully loaded, the Sunday, because it was a Saturday, yeah. Remember, good now, Saturday. Mm -hmm. He shelled the beach, and him life changed from that day. Him life changed from that day, even though dirty wine and everything came after and everything. But that night there, chart the course of him life. I'm going to say so with no apology. Yeah, man, some of us have said some. Some people for member. Member. Mm. You have to member the road to success. Member the people that help you along the way. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I say Amika, we don't bun tickle like could nothing. We don't DF Kelly making the songs, it could nothing. But without yeah, you, but with oh you linking Bill, it All might right. not have happened. It without you not. driving, it might not have happened either. It might not happen because I close, Bill, I close. Mm -hmm. And out of the respect, a few men can call Bill and tell Bill, say, hold on, me a forward. Mm -hmm. And then explaining to him the urgency, he might go wait. Because sometimes I just the respect. Yeah, man. I saw it, go, man. And I see my Tarana, I talk to him, ask him mm -hmm. if he's willing for, if he member, because some of them have short memory too. I'm not saying he does, I don't know. You're saying some of them. Some yeah, of some them. people have short memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, but I saw it go for two. That's well. You brought yep. up a name there, Bounty Killer. What was it like actually working with Bounty Killer back then? Because he wasn't really mad host, but he would come through, do some songs, and go do what he was doing. What was it like to actually be around Killer? those times here all right it's a killer killer is one of the most amazing talent i've ever seen just like abu jobantan mm -hmm. abonti killer is one of the most outstanding talent i've ever seen to see killer record it was like it's like <laughs> One of the best you ever do it, yeah, man. It, it, it was just all a good. Killer, one of the nicest youth, even though people see the aura there. Bunty killer, and if you're there on him, I one of the nicest youth. Yeah, man. I one of the nicest youth you can ever know. Yeah, man. It was all good vibes. All good vibes. All good vibes. No matter the cross, angry, miserable, that's just a, fi a, a, a aura. But if you know the person, mm -hmm. back then, run at, run at Maddow's, run at the box, look at the name of the box, and kill her It was always a good vibes. It was always just entertainment. We a smoke, we a beat some Guinness, we all our vibes, tune a right when time for record, them just go in there, go execute. And you just have to stand up and watch him at work and just know say yo like Utah. But I mean, me used to see my jammies before that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause I remember saying me used to go jammies, I'm gonna go record and everything. I used to see him car. The first time I met him, I don't know if he if he even him remember this, was me and Bujuga Jamis go do some dub plate one day. Bujuga do some dub, I will meet him with the other man. And I remember one song. They might talk about dub for dub, tell them go dub them mumma. And I never forget it after we drive up. Buja had a conversation and Buja tell him, say, yo, come check me a penthouse. Mm -hmm. Drive up, Buja say, yo, I look at DJ, they're bad. That's the first time I met him. But fast forward now to when I come on my house, it was always a good vibes, man. Mm -hmm. It was always a good vibes. I mean, I give a joke. I'm kind of glad to see the whole vibes that with DJ Khalid and kill it because I met Khalid. Mm -hmm. I met Khalid, DJ Khalid, through the whole Bunty Killer. Bunty Killer and DJ Khalid was so close. That's every time I met him through Bunty, mm -hmm. because he usually come at my house, that's Khalid Meta. Come check Bunty. Anytime I'm there at Jamaica, our studio him come. Mm -hmm. Come check, because Bunty, I don't know which part, but I some, he might come link Bunty, and he would have dead with it all day. Me and Khalid did get so cool, that's... Every time him come to Jamaica, there was a time when him come to Jamaica where he would have linked me all personally, Khalid, because me and Kiki, I don't know if him, if him still blaze, mm -hmm. but me and Kiki did, so, did, did, did have a link where I mean, was a link to the link or make the link link. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I me don't see him in our years and I love to see him in these days and I love to see him grow and Mm -hmm. Where is that today? But you know, as I'm saying, memories don't leave like people do. Yeah, put leave it like that. That's so wild, bro. Just being around and being in all of this flex here. If I ask you about Bounty, I have to ask you about Beanie because Beanie came again. He wasn't really Madhouse, but he came and got some crazy hits out of Madhouse. What was it like now with Beanie Man around the camp at that time there? Remember, I said Beanie was being a being around, you know. We know being it from penthouse days. Mm -hmm. Because I remember say, being a man, 
was shocking vibes. Shocking vibes and penthouse you see in a one yard. Mm -hmm. So we know Beanie from then. So Beanie was always, we know Beanie before killer them. Mm -hmm. Beanie was always a good friend of the link from long time. From long, 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 long time. You understand? I'm, I'm Beanie is a youth where. No matter what kind of day where you have, what kind of, what kind, no matter what kind of day you have it. I'm being a come around. Being is a clown. <laughs> where, when I say clown, not in a bad way, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I know. Where? From, your, from him, you're going to laugh. Mm -hmm. It's a youth where from him come around, he's going to just light up the ear. The whole atmosphere, he's going to do something for your laugh. Or say, That's just being it. From, mm -hmm. may I tell you about from before him bus. So Beanie was always around, you know what I mean? From penthouse days. Shocking vibes in used to but as I say, we people never used to say shocking vibes, we used to say penthouse, because it was penthouse here. Mm -hmm. So Bean was always around, man. So Bean was always like like family from a long time. Those times here. There was another name that we brought up very early in the conversation, and he just passed the other day, Merciless. Did you ever connect with Merciless anytime back then? Not really. I met, I, I met him. I met him. And me and him look, look cool as far as me know. But just in the streets. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, the, my few interactions with him was run by Weepo. Stone Love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because as I say, remember, Weepo, a lot of early recordings was for Weepo. And I recorded for Weepo too. I recorded on some of them rhythms that he was on. You see him, Leno, mm -hmm. remember I had a song on that rhythm too, you know? Okay. Yeah, I was on that rhythm. I had a song named Ikip on the Earth. Yes, 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 yes. That was another one of your conscious, that was a bun pole All type, right. of, All the type of song. Mm -hmm. From the Pope fly down and put the Ikip on the Earth. Be a things I want, it's like the land get blood thirst. Queen come back and everything gets get worse. Be a accident and be a man's color. Be yeah, man. Mm -hmm. You know, so... I met I met him through that, but it's a youth where it's always a joy when you see him. Mm -hmm. You never get a negative energy from him as rough as him see him was always a nice youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah man, God rest him soul, you know, Leonard Bartley, you know. As you said, it's not an easy road out here. It's it, There's a lot of bends and turns and people who you meet in the industry and all type of stuff that happens in this industry right here. You yeah, man. I mean? Yeah, man. Crazy. Whatever happened to somebody else that was around a bit too? Whatever happened to Texture? Oh, Texture. Mm -hmm. Ah, whatever happened to Texture? Texture. Um, how am I going to explain this now? Mm -hmm. Texture that's you know that I win on the brother, I'm blood brother in a real life. Okay. Yeah, that's we know on the younger brother. A motherfucker is youngest brother. Yeah. Blood brother. But sometimes texture kinda of move out of line sometimes, yeah, man. Sometimes him head chip, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes it's a youth with us get erratic. So but Texture they live a foreign for a while, so yeah, you know. That's why I never see him for a while. But I think he's back in Jamaica now. I mm -hmm. can't tell you much about him. You more have, have to ask Wayne. But I know, I know he's alive and all right. Mm -hmm. Put it like that. Good. good. Because you said, because I know you even did some, you, you recorded some music for Bojo on the Cell Black label and on the Gargamel label also. Yeah, man. I, I, did, I think I did a few. Mm -hmm. I remember what I did on, 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 on them, but I know I did some recordings for him. Mm -hmm. What was that like now working, recording on his label at this time here now? Just like anything else, him, 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 I read him and you get a track on his record, but I never had nothing for, like, say, no problem for do it or, you know, it, we just did it mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. And I know you recorded on Bounty's Priceless label also, too. This was a song called Yardman. Probably did. I don't remember some of them yeah. songs, to be honest. <laughs> it was on the Virgin Island rhythm there. Yeah, I'm going to send that one to come give me. I don't yeah. remember it. So much music, you know what I mean? But this I'm going to get a drama. I did a combination. 
I remember me and Wayne wanted to do a combination for them label one time for Bounty Killer. And for whatever reason, mm-hmm. I never heard about that song. I don't know what happened to it. Yeah. Yeah. You never got in back then? You never wanted to get into production or anything, start putting out music? No, no, not really. That no, wasn't your thing? No, it wasn't my thing back then. Yeah. It's all good there. And how come at this time when the whole crew's doing all this, we never got a full body of work from you at this time here? So that business here muscle. Sometime. Sometime that business here. It deals with some unfair and sometimes but sometimes I get frust- frustrated, you know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get frustrated and yeah man, sometimes Frankie Sliders take himself away, you know. Yeah, man, but music always my first love. Yeah, man, so we are gonna always do music, but sometimes we don't like the you know, we get deals sometimes, and sometimes make your dust, you know. After just pull back and look in the mirror and evaluate yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Okay, so then this is why I guess you didn't like what was happening. That's why you never put out a full body of work. Not really. Career. I mean, sometimes we have other things I do too, you know. So sometimes if we're there, we don't like the we don't like the pace, we just get a break. I'm just gonna do other things too. Mm-hmm. See me I say? But as I said, music is always the first love. So no matter what we do, we are gonna always do music. Even if it is not a priority. Mm-hmm. We always have to do it because it's an inbound thing. Music chose we. We never chose music, you know? Yeah. For sure. Because I know in, like, I guess the early 2000s is when your career, you had had all the big songs, but your career kind of slowed down a bit. Was this when you moved to the States or this was before you moved to the States? That's when I moved to the States. Because mm-hmm. that's the time when I would up a drama there going on in my life, you know? Yeah, so sometimes you have to just take away yourself away. Take mm-hmm. yourself away because dead man not telling the tales, you know. And the greatest thing in life is life. Mm-hmm. And you have to preserve life. And maybe if I never take myself away, I couldn't dare talk to you today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so too much drama they are going on in my life at that time. You know, for us. Yeah. You have to just, you know, re- just, re- just reflect back on, you know what I mean? You have to just look back in the race. Yeah, man. Who was the first one to move to the States? Was it you or Wayne was the first one to move? Wayne moved to the States before me still. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah Wayne migrated before me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it wasn't really an issue now that you moved to the States. You had a brethren there that you could link with or whatever the case was when you got up there? No, really, you know, because Wayne was, Wayne was down south, I was up north. As a matter of fact, lying, Wayne was up north first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know, little after I came to the States, he moves, he moved down south. So, he was still just a phone call away, but he was a physical, and I could have lost, go check him. I would have to jump on a plane. Yeah, so... All the things that, and then Dave they migrate to and they must down south and we go down south a couple of times and did some recordings only for Dave too at the time. I don't know if you remember the return with him and Yes man. And them you know? Yeah, we mm-hmm. did some recordings up here. So even then now, when you moved to the States, because you said a lot of stuff was happening in your life at this time here, do you plan on still doing music when you got to the States or you're just trying to leave all of that alone at that time there? Um, so we always had the music. We always love music. Um, we migrate. We just did wing it at the time. But my more did that secure me mm-hmm. because said so much was happening around me. You see me, I say? Mm-hmm. So much was happening around me. When I say a lot was happening, a lot was happening. Yeah, people dead. I look at brother charge here, yeah, murder. A whole lot of things happen. Mm-hmm. So I just had to take myself away. You know, we love music and we can do music from anywhere. 
So we'll just step away for a minute because of all the happenings that was happening. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I say? And just make it make it work itself out. You understand. Has there been any point in your career where you actually fell out of love with the music itself? Never fall out of love with the music, but sometimes the business, the business different from music, you know. Mm-hmm. Never fall out of love with music, but it's the business. Mm-hmm. It's a perilous, grimy business. So sometimes you have mixed feelings, you know. It's like a girl where you have and you know, I get a hundred from her. So sometimes you have mixed feelings, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's the business part of it. But music itself, never fall out of love with music. Man. Never, never have and never will. Good one. When did you actually learn the business of the business? Learn the business of the business from early out, you know. I remember I said the type of people that made it their own. I understand the business from early out. Mm-hmm. So the business is never yet something I misunderstood or I didn't understand. And that's why I like the business. Because it's a grimy business. It murky, you people, know. It well, murky. I tell people, when you're on the streets, people are going to rob you with a gun. You see, yeah, when man. you're in the music business, people are going to rob you with a pen, boss. Yeah, you man. understand? Yeah, it's so man. wild. You understand? Yeah, a rough business, man. Mm-hmm. Because, as I said, I knew you were away for a while, but then I knew you had put out a song called Anna Jamaica This. But you recorded that song, I think, twice. No. No. I did a song called Anna Jamaica This. is a different song from you know what? Jamaica Like you, This. Yes, you're right. That's why I was, that's why I was mixing you up because the, the um, themes are very similar. Very similar. Yes, but it's I was different. a kid in the nineteen eighties and I survived it out to all the nineties, been to several political parties, but I have never seen Jamaica like this. Been to see I got them time on the man list. Tony Brown judge flash the cup of them as stockies. Jim Brown Mucky Marshall not the Christian and Clady. Never see Jamaica like this. Tell me how the you them get so vicious, how the you them get so vile. It's like some of them have the heart of a crocodile. All them DNA are linked back to some reptile. It's like the for the you them blood a boil. We see them around the place like some Taliban style or some John Wayne days when the West was wild. Imagine them stick up and them rap the whole coil. I still turn around and then murder the child. I come back on the corner, they come over a profile. I smile, let them lose to something worthwhile. They better know some father, God, I lock them file. I wonder where it's not to take for some of them reconcile. I was a kid in the 1980s. And I survived it. And the, the, the new one is like, I'm not Jamaica this. I couldn't show me a this. Every youth are pre badness. I couldn't show me a this. You them have some big fat matic. I couldn't show me a this. I know for them not afraid for bus it. I couldn't show me a this. So I two different songs, you know. Mm-hmm. And again, you could tell you're writing by uh, you're writing about what you see, what you feel, what you hear, because yeah, you're coming from the heart. Yeah, man, I ask them, when I love Jamaica, man, no matter where I go on Jamaica, we love, you know. Mm-hmm. We love Jamaica. There's no place in the world like Jamaica, you know. But when you sit back and you see the news and you see what I go on, and you see all a man kill all four picnic and a mother. Hmm. He, he, he cut all, stab up and cut up all like a 23 month old baby. And a Jamaica this brother. So a, a real thing, man. Them sang the true man. Hmm. I mean, you wish if the people that may spin the music did see it that way there, you know? Cause the type of music that I focus on. People can say what they want to say. Music influence people. For sure. Music influence people. And if you feel like music now influence people, how is it? If a man and a woman get married, see? Them have an intimate moment where them get passionate and dance to a love song. Music influence people, mm-hmm. no matter what them say. So you have to know where I'm, and, and, I'm in a perfect, you know, and I get me wrong, you know, because I do a whole lot of gangster song, you know. Mm-hmm. But you st- there's still a limit to where you do. 
You see me I say? I'm the ex-rated song, but there's still a limit to what you do. But to each his own. I leave it at that. But you figure if you could put out gangster girls, X-rated, you must could put out a conscious too just to bounce it back. But you've been doing conscious from the beginning of your career also. So it's a it's a mix of everything that you've been putting out. Yeah, because life consists of so much entity. Where there's reality, there's hardcore reality cause. I couldn't Jamaica, it's a hardcore reality same way. Mm-hmm. And once you see your face, a reality same way. And even grab it up a reality same way, because you have some yellow fatty them buff. And even one, 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 a real. So, all right. How me do music? Mm-hmm. Most of my music, most music I do, and a friction. A real thing. Life itself, you know what I mean? Things that happen around you or things that happen on a daily basis, you know? Yeah, most, most of the time I write off of the environment. Yeah. I could definitely see that there. And that brings us up to your new song right now with somebody you could see that's not your brethren. This is your brother, Wayne Wonder. Your new song and visuals party all night all right how do you guys come up with that new song there and why do you guys decide to put this out here now because it's it's appropriate time mm-hmm. after a pandemic the place locked down for almost three years all i want to do is party all night long <laughs> no party i care you understand what i say mm-hmm. uh, all i want to do is party all night so i think the time it was perfect how did i came up with a song like that I didn't came up with that idea. My little brother did. Okay. Yeah, my little brother did. His name is Jim Reds. Upcoming artist. Bad artist to bad songwriter. Mm-hmm. So me asleep one night and him call me. I say, yo, Frank is like, never a bad idea. And from him, utter a little part of me in a ears. I said, hold on, let me get the singer up on the line. Yeah, because when I utter, me can't sing. Hmm. And I know, say, say, if we want to execute that and put a twist to it and an addition to it, it could be what it is today, and that's exactly what happened. Hmm. Yeah, so, it was, as I said, music, you know, three either are always better than one. So by my little brother calling me, I utter where him utter to me that night there. Eh? And me call Wayne Wanda and we have a three-way conversation. The rest is history. But we still have to give Jim Reds the credit. Mm-hmm. Because without him, it couldn't happen. But then again, without Wayne Wanda, it couldn't happen. But then again, without I and I. Because by him calling to me, I mean, it's a relay. Mm-hmm. Teamwork, the dream work, you know? And then, don't forget that, the producer, Pete Star, One House Records. One House Records, yeah, man. Yes. I was already in dialogue with Pete Star because I already had the rhythm. Mm-hmm. My brother already had the rhythm because I feel school virgin. Mm-hmm. He's a pilot, so... Oh, the idea came up. I had conversated with Pete Star earlier that day. One of those records, and him sent me the rhythm. My brother already had the rhythm. So him did already have vibe to it. I got the rhythm that day. So him know me have the rhythm. So I guess if he does have vibe the rhythm, he might have sang for the rhythm. And him called me with the idea. So the idea was made for the rhythm. So big up, big up one house records, you know. Big up Bridging Pete Star, Sky Boss, you know. He's actually a pilot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the year every day, probably, probably not the year right now with <laughs> probably 200 people life in his hand, you know. That's so wild, but producers yeah, on the side. Yeah, man. Because him love music. Mm-hmm. And he's an artist too. Okay. But 
coming soon at the nearest theater, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Got you. And even the visuals, because that's one thing with you. You don't see a lot of Frankie Sly visuals at all. I can't really remember any per se like that. What made you guys decide to put out visuals for this song here right now? I know you listen to the song, Muscle. Mm -hmm. Give me your honest opinion on the song before I answer that question. But it's a great, great energy song. And what I like, what you guys did, you didn't think there. You could have gone lyrically deep, but you chose to keep it simple and keep it bouncy where anybody could enjoy this song right here and keep it moving. Yeah, man, because as we say, it was that type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The pandemic was just getting over the hump. People wanted to have fun. Have fun. People was having any fun for a while. Mm -hmm. So that's why we said, all I want to do is party all night long. We just touch down on the beach and a chill. We climb on a chair with some high grader bill. Pop the car, come in the champagne spill. A beach party, a shot in and a grill. And girl, they are no fun and sun for so till. Lika can done food the pan the grill. Now man na pre na man no figure kill. Me feel like say me woulda easily blow all a mill. You hear the line eh? No man na pre na man no figure kill. Mm. I saw much killing a go on. You see me I say? I just fun music man. The place need that. It needs some fun. Too much darkness. Mm -hmm. Yeah man. No, all of the youth them a make song. All of them a chopper. All of them a scammer. All them a kill people, all them a gun man. No fun in the music no more. So, all I wanna do, party all night long. Yeah, you know. So, remember, I said, I win one day, you know. Mm -hmm. International Grammy nominated singer, you know. You hear the vocals of the man put on the song? Of course, but. All right. You hear the vocals of the man, you hear the man deal with it? Yo. All right. So. It, it's almost like he's been frozen in time. Like he just, like they just froze him, say, listen, we're going to freeze you right here as an artist. Because his vocals never, they never got old and rusty or anything. They just froze him right here. So Forever. boss, you say right here. Forever young, man. You got it. Forever young. You got it. Yes, sir. Frankie said, listen, your openness, the way you tell the stories, I felt like I was in the stories there too. Like I was on the corner. I was in the studio. I was in the car. Your storytelling ability, now I could see why you write the way you write because you could speak it that same way too. Yeah, excellent I'm conversation, boss. Excellent. Yes, yeah, I'm you right. understand? Uh, excellent question here too, man. Oh, yes, Thank sir, you. Man. Yeah, man. I love all the articulated questions, you know? Thank and you. A, and I'm a fan of the program. Been a fan of the program. You know, been a watch your program. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't tell you I watch every episode, but I've watched a lot of episodes. You know, that means yeah. a lot. And you got a big up Freddy. Freddy is the one that directly made this happen. Still, you know, what I mean? after big up rapper Freddy. Yeah, man, original youth from long, long time, from early nineties. Good youth, clean hearted youth, great youth, and a great friend. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I appreciate Freddy for reaching out to one. From Freddy pick up the phone and call, mm -hmm. I can't say no. Mm -hmm. The respect I have for the man, for the brother, you know? For sure. I'm big up now around saying him there too. Yeah, man. You understand? Because that was a crew there, Weber and them, man. That was yeah, man, all the. Yeah, man, big up, big up Weber too, man. I was say, man, Weber originally, man. Big mm -hmm. up Jumbo, big up Daddy School too. He's, you know? The whole East Kingston, you know? Super Twitch, all of them man there. You big know up I mean? Twitch, big up Super Twitch too. Yeah, man. A one link, you know? Mm -hmm. You get it. Last e question I have for East, you. East Kingston, you know? You got it. Last question I have for you. We we spoke about them, brought up their names and everything. I want to know, what's your relationship like with Bojo and Dave Kelly in 2022? Which one you want first? Choice is yours. I don't have no relationship with Bojo Bantan. None whatsoever. Dave Kelly, I'm a brother forever, for life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brother for life. Yeah, man. That's a, that's a brother right there. Yeah, man. And 
my career would have never been a career without. Regardless of, I give thanks to Weepo mm -hmm. and John Chan and everybody else and Donovan Jeremy. But Dave Kelly is the reason why people still call mm -hmm. and say, Frank is like, we need a show or we need some dub plate or, yeah. The body I work with me and him do together. We live on forever. All in my dead and gone. People are gonna say bad man I love fast so all. <laughs> you see what I said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So salute well is Kelly Belly. Today birthday too. Just like that. Okay. Yeah, today Dave Kelly birthday too. So big up Dave Kelly. Blessed by your earth strong, my brother. Super yeah man, full magic. joy. Yeah man. Fourth That's August, magic. today I'm earth strong. Magic right there. Yeah, but me and Bojo want to really have a relationship. I mean where do, where did things go left with you and Bojo? I don't even know. Mm -hmm. I, I have no idea. Because I just understand a life, yeah, man. Sometimes people change, you know. Mm -hmm. Or maybe sometimes when I change, I'm change. Sometimes people them just get a, a chance for show who they really are. You know what I mean? I know I've never done nothing to him. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen him for I haven't seen him for a lot of years. But we don't have a relationship, and we can't tell you why we don't have a relationship, because I'm not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I just life, man, and I wish him all the best same way. I'm not still the baddest DJ in the world. I'm still my DJ. You see me, I say? But we don't have a relationship, and I can't tell you why we don't have a relationship. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you talk to me, I can ask him. I don't know why, because I'm set. I don't know. The business, boss. This the business, business, the business. Brings people together, and it tears people apart at the exact same time. Yeah, man, it's a perilous business, man. Do you understand? And you know me, I say, I'm going to say, you know the relationship from day one. Couple of mute them born in a man. I know two I mute them before him. Hmm. Yeah, him first two kids yeah. born in a man. Because he was off the island when them born and I was there. Mm -hmm. Just a support. Marcus and Shadi. Shadi and Marcus, I should say. You see me, I said, them probably don't remember because they're my baby, but the mother remember. Mm -hmm. You see me, I said, because visiting her as I was there with the Carmel Parish Fair after she gave birth. Mm -hmm. All right. And if, you, and, if she, and if she watch this, she's going to say it's true. Frankie telling. Mm -hmm. So, where things broke down, I don't know. I have no idea. But it's life. And as I said, me not, me still not old, not grudge, not animosity. You know what I say? I tell you, I'm still the baddest DJ, I'm still my DJ. But a life, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people grow apart, you know? It's the business. Yeah. yeah, the business. You know what? who you remind me of, if I've ever had a conversation with them? You remind me of like Panhead, that militancy, that, that big man thing. You mm -hmm. have a Panhead vibe about, I've never spoken to Panhead, never seen an interview with Panhead. Just from the stories I've heard about him, that's mm -hmm. who you remind me of 100%. Okay. First time I heard that one, but. Yeah, man. It was, that, good, it was a good friend, so. That energy. That's good. And a good yard. Great mm -hmm. yard. Yeah. yeah, man. Rest in peace, Panhead. You understand. Floor is yours. Anything you want to say, anybody you want to big up, leave some contact information if they want to check out for shows, for dub plates, for anything. The floor is yours 100% right now. Well, first of all, I want to say big up muscle because I've been a fan of the program and just keep doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? You're doing a great job and it's going to grow. Thank you. It's growing and it's going to continue to grow. Well, you don't know we have to big up the Almighty because without God, nothing is possible. Yeah, I have to give thanks to everybody who had played a part in my career from Penthouse to Weepo to John John, Steely and Clevy, the whole works. Most of all, Madhouse. And even most of all, we in Wanda. My brother from another mother. Saying, yeah, big up the entire 
Madhouse family. You know me as from Janet Davis to Dave Kelly Skelly Belly, Wayne Wanda, Baby Sham, the whole works, you know? Mm-hmm. But upon a more serious note now, bless up my old lady. I lose my old man last year. Mm-hmm. About 11 months ago, but Jamaica got bury him. My mother still strong and I survive. Big up my brother Jim Reds, my entire family. That's basically it, you know. Um, Frankie Sly still there, I still have the good music. You can check me out on all, all of the social media. Instagram, Frankie Sly Music. Follow me on Instagram. For dub plates, anything you can inbox me. Frankie Sly Music. Facebook, the same Frankie Sly Music. Twitter, Frankie Sly Music. But you know, the Instagram. Direct message is the easiest way to get in touch with you. Yeah, so I just said them I just said them hustle and big up Freddy again and give thanks again for the link, you know. Definitely. Yeah, man, I big up yourself, muscle. Amazing, it's a pleasure, you know. Amazing conversation, boss. I'm t- again, those those stories that you go into, I felt like I was in the car with you. I felt like I was in the studio. I felt like we wherever you were in that moment, I felt like I was there too. Amazing conversation, boss. Because I was realness. And the truth alone shall set you free. You understand. It's the man said so. Once you speak from the heart, you know, it will come across the way it does. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Definitely. Life. And big up Jim Reds, you know. Upcoming artist, my look, my look a brother. Mm-hmm. Amazing talent. Look out for him. Jim Reds. Jim Reds. Yes, I got that. I know I told you last one, but this super last one, are we going to get a body of work from you anytime soon? Watch now. You see, it's coming. Okay. Consistency is everything, you know, and that was my biggest downfall. Mm -hmm. But guess what? After 30 years in the business, look at me. We still have youth in us. Mm-hmm. So we still have put in work. And I know you pay close attention to what's happening because I must watch your program. Mm-hmm. I'm listen to you. So I know you watch what I go on. So if you watch the last year, you see that consistent body of work there forward. Mm. Watch now. Continue watching. 100%. And that we will be doing. Watch yeah, man. It. It's a forward, man. Believe me. Work I put in behind the scene. Mm-hmm. So let's look out. You know, so let's look out for Frankie Sly. As I say, Instagram, Frankie Sly Music. Mm-hmm. And this other thing there. Facebook, Frankie Sly Music. Let's watch what I go on. We have some good things in the pipeline of forward, you know? Crazy. Yeah, man. Let's go out and support that single there. Party all night long. Frankie Sly, we in wonder. On the one house records. Big up my virgin Pete Star. And big up Mark Pinnock too. Yeah, man. Big up Mark Pinnock, Natural Bridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. My virgin for life, you know, from school days, you know. Yeah. Sly, let me give you an outro and get you out of here because this conversation, wicked conversation, boss. You hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another. Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. We can take off my glasses so them can see them in my eye before I leave. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusicut.com. <laughs>